OK, well, stay with us. Um, now, in the same elections four years ago, uh, the BNP won a seat on the London Assembly for the first time. Their successful candidate later fell out with his party leadership and has now for a while uh, been an independent. It's just one episode in a series of splits, financial issues and disastrous election results. Andrew Cryan reports. When, four years ago, the BNP won their first ever seat on the London Assembly, some other candidates were so appalled they refused to share a platform with their newly elected member. Like rats leaving sinking ships. As their new Assembly member, Richard Barnbrook had the right to question the mayor at meetings and was given a platform from which to build a profile. And this rapid replacement of the white British population in London. But life was not made easy for him. At Mayor's Question Time, Boris Johnson refused to make eye contact or address him directly. Uh, do you know, do you know I, I really don't think I, I can think of an answer to that question. And, uh, I don't think, and I you don't, don't have to. So. And away from City Hall, the party has been beset by problems. In 2010, party leader Nick Griffin failed to win a parliamentary seat representing the London constituency of Barking. The message from Barking to the BNP is clear. Get out and stay out. And on the same night, they lost all 12 seats on the same local council, Barking and Dagenham, once their stronghold in London. The party lost money and members. Eddie Butler was one of them. Formerly a senior figure in the party, he challenged Nick Griffin for the leadership, but was then expelled from the BNP. He went on to join the English Democrats and blames Griffin for many of his old party's problems. In the run-up to the uh, general election, the BNP's chairman, Nick Griffin, publicly accused his publicity director of trying to kill him, and uh, that was all over the papers. It wasn't exactly... A, and the charges were dropped because it was a ridiculous allegation. And clearly that isn't good publicity in the run-up to a general election. But it's imploded, essentially. There's uh, financial and uh, political allegations of corruption within it. The membership has declined by probably three-quarters. BNP Assemblymember Richard Barnbrook also left the party, but stayed on at the Assembly as an independent. That's left the BNP without a single elected representative in London, even in areas like Barking and Dagenham, where they once hoped to return a member to Parliament and even control the council. But the election to the London Assembly, though, is very different. To win at a council level, you need concentrated support in one particular place and you need to be popular. To get on the London Assembly, though, you only need about 5% of the vote spread across the entire city. Not beyond the BNP's reach, according to Hope Not Hate, a group which campaigns against the party. The BNP still have a brand name. Whatever's going on inside internally, the kind of voters out there aren't going to know about that. They see BNP, they, they know what the BNP stands for, and um, there is obviously a group of voters out there who, who find, find that quite appealing. But in this election, the BNP might have a different appeal. The party, who are famous for their anti-immigrant stance, are trying something new. Their candidate himself is an immigrant from Uruguay, Carlos Cortiglia. Campaigning with little money, much of his focus has been online. We've found that Carlos has started up blogs hosted by the Daily Telegraph and Jewish Chronicle websites. The Daily Telegraph told us... This is not commissioned by the Telegraph. However, everyone is entitled to their opinions and, within the scope of the law, they're entitled to publish them on my Telegraph. The Jewish Chronicle, on the other hand, said they stopped him posting when they found out he was a BNP candidate, but have not removed what is already up on the internet. While the messages on these blogs mostly concern foreign policy, it's issues like transport which will dominate the mayoral race. So what is the BNP candidate's message on public transport? I directly oppose the initiative of Boris Johnson of giving us an automated underground service. I think it is a scandal that with the rise in unemployment we have in Britain, they are talking about using computers and robots instead of people. And on the BNP's signature issue, immigration, he strikes a less radical line than some might expect from the party. We only oppose those who are not legally here. Anybody else who's legal here, we stand to represent them. And as part of our GLA campaign, we're trying to spot the indigenous Londoner. This is Steve Squire, BNP candidate for the London Assembly, using more traditional BNP language on an online campaign video for this election. All the businesses in London seem to be owned by, by newcomers and immigrants. Um, and they're only employing their own. 
do you agree with the statement that all businesses in London seem to be owned by newcomers and immigrants? I come back to the point. If they are legally entitled, if they are immigrants, but they are legally entitled, I have no issue with that. Okay, because I mean, it's just that it's something that Steve here said on a BMP video that's on your website as part of your, your London campaign. So I'm just wondering whether you're maybe giving one message to the people on the internet and another message to the BBC. You come and ask Carlos Cortilla tomorrow and Carlos Cortilla will give you the same answer. You are not interviewing anybody else, you are talking to me. If you want to know what I think, you ask me. Voters will have five weeks to decide what they think of the BNP and their candidates. If these scenes aren't repeated again, it will be seen by many as a sign of a party in decline. Andrew Cryan, uh, Andrew Cryan reporting uh, there. Jenny Jones, the BNP in trouble. The Greens had 10 councillors in London in 2010. Now